Hi, it's me again, Michael, your favorite Agile thought provoker. And I'm still in the middle of my series on team models. And today I got for you the GRPI model. It's about as old as me. It was introduced in 1977 by three guys named Ruben, Plavnik and Fry. And this model is one of the models that are very, very simple to remember. The acronym makes it even easier. And it is good conversation starter. There's four dimensions to this one, like the acronym already hints. The first one is the goals. What are the goals of the team? What are your objectives? What's the intent and expectations behind the things that you're working on? What are your priorities? And which of those things are actually relevant, important, and what do you understand about them? Try having an open discussion around your goals and setting the goals that are helpful for you. Then together with goals comes roles. Roles of the people contributing towards working to those goals. The more clear your roles are, the easier it is to find your own place in the bigger scheme. And with those roles, of course, comes responsibility attached. As you know, the Spider-Man saying, with great power comes great responsibility. So which responsibility can you bear? Which responsibility do you want to bear within the teams? Who is doing what? And what's your expertise that you can contribute towards the team? Those discussions can be led between individual team members across the entire team and within the team and the organization if you say that, that we don't have all of the expertise on board or the responsibilities that we have to bear are not the responsibilities that we can bear. That's an example. Then you come to the formal part, how are you going to do this stuff? The process. I'm talking a lot about working agreements, for example. How are we going to get things done? What can we expect from each other? How are we making decisions? What is the established procedure for getting something done? For example, if we say that we are using CI-CD, in the process we might establish that it's not done until we have automated tests. Or we might even say that we are using strict BDD, TDD processes. And if somebody is just writing code without even thinking about uh, what's the expected application behavior that I'm trying to model, then this is a breach of process. And so we need to talk about what is this process? What do we expect from this process? Why do we have this process? And how do we organize ourselves around our processes? How are we solving problems within the team? Do we have frequent problem solving meetings? Do we just solve a talk? How do we interact with each other in order to get problems solved? How do we organize ourselves in order to reach done? It doesn't help so much to say, oh yeah, we have a tester, we have an analyst, we have some coders, we have a UX specialist, that's all cool. But how do we organize ourselves in order to reach a done product increment? That's an important question to answer, so that's a good discussion to have. And then we come to the last one, and that is the interpersonal. Interpersonal, and that's relationships. That's already everything in this model. There's not so much else to it, except those four aspects. In interpersonal relationships, we should think about how open and how honest is our communication with each other. Do we address everything that is important? Do we feel comfortable around each other? How um, frequently do we actually talk with each other? Because some developers, they have this habit they do a good job, but they don't really talk to even the person sitting next to them. 
Is that a good thing? Are we happy with that? Should we be talking a bit more frequently? How important is the other person actually to us? How engaged are we with the team, with the project, with the product, with whatever we are doing? And how flexible are we actually as a team? Because you know the standard sentence, uh, I did my part and John's not around, so we're waiting for John. That is very inflexible because it doesn't help us produce customer value. So how are we going to address a situation when one team member who does have special expertise is not around? Um, there's a lot of discussions we could have around this topic and that is an area of interpersonal relationships. Now what do we do with this model in practice? We can either use it to set up our team from the beginning and say, okay, do we have clarity on goals, roles, process and interpersonal relationships? We can also use this model in retrospectives to say, okay, we look at those four quadrants, let's do some dot voting where are we good, where are we not good, and where we seem to be the worst, we should have a deeper conversation about why do we think we are not so good when it comes to, for example, goals or roles. And so that is uh, one way to use this simple GRPI model. And if you ask me what, how to this model relates to, for example, the Tuckman model, you can combine them quite well during the forming phase. Just bring the team together and say, okay, how do we want to form ourselves around our goal, our roles and uh, around our process and uh, what are the relationships that we actually have. During storming is also very helpful to say, okay, before we just beat each other all the time, Let's just focus on one of those quadrants and get one problem solved at a time. This one also relates to the connect model, which basically is one of the ways that we can approach to make progress on one of the quadrants. So that's it from my side for the GRPI model. Hope you liked it. And if you did, please leave a like. And if you didn't already do it, subscribe please, because there's more content coming up. Enjoy.